Good evening, my name is Claire Gillis, and today I'll be talking about computers and how they negatively affect students' growth. Technology today has advanced leaps and bounds compared to 10 years ago. However, are we allowing technology to do the teaching for us and allowing students to depend on technology in order to learn? Today, we are speaking of how computers negatively affect student growth. There are four main areas in which computers negatively affect student growth. First is how the student learns. Second is student health. Next is how the student's mind works. And lastly is how computer software is a poor teaching tool. Younger students tend to learn through experience rather than just learning facts. Students need a three-dimensional world in order to learn successfully. According to a group called the Alliance for Childhood, which includes 75 educators, child development specialists, and physicians, plus a handful of technology experts, they express the need not to use the computers all the time. The Alliance states in an article published in the San Francisco Gate the following. The de development process has many dimensions, physical, emotional, imaginative, artistic, and social, as well as cognitive. By the student's continual computer usage, it negatively affects the developmental, mental, and physical growth. Just as there are effects on the mental growth, there are also effects on a student's general health from the excessive use of computers in the classroom. Some common physical effects are eye strain and carpal tunnel syndrome. According to education.com, studies show that for young children, this can lead to sitting for long periods of time unsupported, with necks twisted and wrists overextended. The effects on the cognitive development can be poor imaginative and creative abilities, along with stunted brain growth. Many parents believe that by the child playing an educational game on the computer, it's better than sitting them in front of the TV. However, educational psychologist and teacher Jane Healy disagrees and states the following. She doesn't believe there is much difference between the two. Playing together or reading together provides as much stimulation as the software with much more benefits with social interaction. A student's mind works well with more self-discovery by placing a student in front of a computer, this doesn't allow a student to discover, but instead gives them more access to information. Younger children learn through tactile methods. The sense of touch is used to help the learning process. It also further exposes them to different ways to discover learning. Lastly, Computers should not be used solely for the purpose of teaching, but more as a tool. Computers are a poor model of reality. Often in my classroom, I see students become obsessed with being on the computer and what is going on on Twitter or Facebook, rather than what is happening in the world. Along with the detachment from reality, there are the more common situations such as the poor software and how quickly it is outdated, the inappropriate and often incorrect material that students access, and the affordability factor. According to Julie Henry, education correspondent for The Telegraph, there has been no proven advancement in academic performance by using the computers in the classroom. In the end, technology is a wonderful tool but not a solution when it comes to education. Thank you so much for your time and attention.